Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to round 10 of Tata Steel Chess Tournament in Vegas Z 2020. Uh, as white, we have Magnus Carlsen, a world champion, actual world champion with ranking 2872. Uh, so that's the highest ranking on the planet Earth. And as his opponent, as black, Vladislav Kovalev, and uh, his ranking is 2660. He is player from Belarus who won the last year edition of Tata Steel um, tournament, but not the Masters tournament, uh, Challengers tournament. So he won that uh, quite easily. This is why this year he has a chance to play in Masters. Uh, however, he uh, performed so badly so far, he is in the last place. Uh, he managed to win one game and uh, losing most of the uh, games. Uh, so let's see how the game goes. We have d4 by Magnus Carlsen, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, knight c3, and bishop e7 is the most popular move, and it was chose by uh, Kovaliev as well. We have bishop on g5, of course, the most popular line, and here we have castle e3 by Carlsen. Uh, so um, this, this line is called um, a very, very exciting way because this is modern variation, normal line. So that's um, everything is pretty standard. And now we have h6. And of course, in this position, bishop on h4 is the most popular move. But Magnus Carlsen play some move which is uh, clearly disadvantage for him. He play bishop on f4, but he said in the interview that it at least uh, Kovaliev has to think on his own uh, how to uh, how to play next. So uh, he decided for c5 first. We have d takes on c5 by Magnus Carlsen. Bishop takes on c5, and now we have a3 silent move by Carlsen, but giving the space for maneuver for the uh, for the bishop if um, the pawn on c4 is taken. And sooner or later, this pawn gonna be taken as usual in this uh, kind of openings. Uh, the other uh, way of, of playing would be exchange, of course, on the in the center and creating the isolated queen's pawn, which which position is also uh, very well known and analyzed uh, thousands of times. Knight c6 by Kovaliev, and then we have queen c2 by Magnus Carlsen. And now knight on h5. It uh, the move is uh, it looks odd, but it's very typical for the London system. If white player forget to play h3, um, then this uh, knight can be exchanged for this bishop. So Magnus play bishop on g3, and black don't need to exchange right now. Bishop is not going anywhere, and if trying to save the bishop some playing h3 then can be taken and the uh, uh, pawn structure would be totally messed up. So we have d takes on c4 now and bishop goes on c4 without losing a tempo on for example e2 or d3 and, and c4. So uh, th that's a small advantage by white and bishop e7. So bringing this um, bishop to the more um, active diagonal uh, and uh, trying to remaneuver some uh, pieces. And here we have bishop a2. And uh, this is one of the moments of the game where Kovaliev has to really think on his own and, and find the plan what he wants to play. So for example, queen b6 would be a plan. Queen a5 would be a plan, but also interesting would be sacrificing the pawn on b5. So for example, if white take, black could check the white king and after knight on c3, bishop a6 would be played and black actually would stay slightly better with the um, uh, chances of attacking the the king staying still in the center. So that was one of the plans could be played, but wasn't. A6 was played by Kovaliev. A rather passive move, uh, not really recommended. Uh, maybe preparing b5 and bringing the bishop to the game on the longest diagonal, but let's see how that happened. 
first Magnus attack the queen with the rook on d1, so queen has to move, queen a5, uh, quite late, moving on a5. Uh, and now we have bishop on b1, so uh, that's the serious threat because it's checkmate in one move, and probably g6 would be uh, the most healthy way to, to play with the plan on um, probably g uh, bishop on f6 and g7. Uh, so fianchetto maybe uh, then bringing the the knight back or exchange on g3 up to the situation but here we have f5 and f5 uh, create the weakness on uh, g6 so not really the great move but also giving the the chance on playing on this diagonal by white uh, however here in magnus uh, play castle and of course knight on g3 so now uh, now this is the time in this situation to take this bishop and now h take on g3 so if takes before then rook would have some attacking chances on the open h file but while the rook is on f1 already it's not possible anymore we have bishop on f6 so controlling the uh, central squares uh, giving some hard time maybe would give some not not hard time but giving some uh, less options for playing by white in the center uh, but Mag magnus attack this center by e4 uh, and here this this is the threat to take exchange here open the position open the position of the king and then try to have some attacking chances so uh and also pawn taking on e4 with uh, with the ideas of taking by a knight and then moving this knight somewhere with creating the uh, mating ideas would be pretty pretty dangerous so a bishop takes on c3 first b takes on c3 and seems like knight e5 would be the safest uh, way for Kovaliev to try to look for a maybe probably draw because his position is um, already not so active these pieces can't move at all from their position and uh, white pieces all play in the game already so uh, very unfortunately for Kovaliev knight e5 probably would be the way to go and after exchanging a uh, couple of pieces on e5 rook f on e1 maybe b5 trying to uh, bring the bishop and the rook uh, to the game uh, we would have e takes on f5 queen takes on e5 and uh, that's totally playable for black they have isolated pawn but so uh, white also have and uh, white has to decide what to do now uh, black can develop the pieces they're gonna be in the defense definitely so rooks can come on the, the seventh rank but it's still somehow playable but in this position uh, queen takes on a3 so Kovaliev decided to take the pawn and uh, and then defend and then if he uh, managed to defend then he would have a very dangerous uh, pass pawn that was his plan e takes on f5 by magnus e takes on f5 rook f on e1 and in this position actually magnus thought okay um, i'm winning this um, this game so uh you can see that in interview and here we have queen a5 queen a5 uh not the greatest move but also try to find other way uh for black to develop so for example queen c7 uh, bishop on d7 and then rook can be brought to d8 maybe that would be some chance uh, at least in in Kovaliev mind uh, but here we have g4 by Magnus and bishop go on c7 as planned and here a knight h4 uh, the most prosaic way of winning um, this this game that's what Magnus said we have g5, so uh, Kovaliev tried to be really active here. Uh, not, not sure if it's the best way to do. 
uh, but there is not not many not many chances so g5 and here a knight takes on f5 of course um, the most prosaic way um, to win exchange the pieces and get advantage of the uh, white pieces uh, attacking uh, but Magnus in interview uh, gave us the line which was in his mind. Uh, not the greatest line, but it's interesting to show uh, what's going on in the, you know, in the mind of the, of the chess genius. So he could play knight on g6 and after rook f6, rook, sorry about that, rook a8 uh, with check and after king g7, knight h8. So a uh, pretty fancy way, which only can, you know, be in the world champion's mind. Uh, Stockfish uh, says like it's it's better for white, but not so not so you know not so promising. Yeah, th there is some advantage, of course, but uh, also uh, nothing forcing to win here. No tactics here. So, um, but it's interesting to show also the line like that. But of course, knight on f5 was played. A bishop don't need to go on a d7 anymore, can attack on f5, and g takes on f5. We have a rook on f6, um, preventing the threat uh, rook on um, e6, uh, which was played anyway, so uh, it's not prevented. Uh, and here maybe king g7 would be stronger but uh, the position is so bad that uh, Kovalev play rook uh, a to f8 so protecting the rook uh, and here Magnus could go for uh, some winning lines uh, but, but they are complicated and it seems from interview that he was uh, already like I don't know, bored of this game and he don't want to calculate everything. So he want to win the most prosaic way. Uh, but I give you the example because uh, showing the game without this would be, uh, you know, blasphemy for, for, for chess. So queen on e4 could be played. That, would the, that was the uh, most, um, the strongest uh, uh, way of playing and for example black could um, s consolidate the defense queen g7 now we would have bishop on a2 with very uh, serious discoveries so uh, king on h7 rook d on d6 and now black for example could exchange uh, on e6 rook f6 could try to exchange more but then bishop d5 uh, attacking the knight and here if black decide uh, take uh, on e6 so exchange more we would have queen on e6 and and now we have uh, the mating ideas if this queen moves anywhere else so for example queen f8 and so the queen has to stay around but then f6 so opening the diagonal for uh, for the pieces king h8 and now bishop e4 anyway and here is actually nothing to play so for example knight d8 is the only way to to prevent from checkmate but of course it uh, also gives nothing e7 would be played the the most prosaic way and then uh, queen g8 uh, bishop d5 that would be quite fancy bishop d5 of course a uh, bishop can't be taken because of checkmate on g7 uh, so queen h7 and now queen f8 check queen g8 and of course checkmate on g8 so that would be um, if if the exchange happen but if black don't want to exchange and just want to wait for example queen f8 then bishop just would uh, exchange the for the knight on c6 b takes on c6 and rook e7 rook f7 uh, protecting that but now we, we would have rook on e8 with attacking on the queen and now queen has uh, nowhere to move uh, it's really if if the queen goes on uh, g7 then uh, of course we have attack uh, and uh, that would be uh, this way so the the attack happened queen g6 would be played uh, 
and here rook h8 and uh, it's all done uh, because the the queen is lost but if the queen decide to move out then that would be ended with uh, checkmate by the pawn uh, you know discovered checkmate quite interesting and uh, these were the most more, more more spectacular ways of winning for Magnus, but he just simply take on f6. So he see uh, without any calculations that he can just simply win this way. So we have bishop on a2 and uh, king on f8, which actually is the best uh, best move. If king g7, uh, then after bishop on e6, there are threats which are very very dangerous for uh, for black and uh, uh, black would have to uh, sacrifice the exchange and probably got uh, checkmated uh, soon after uh, so king on f8 was uh, played now queen d3 by magnus knight e5 attacking the queen queen e4 by magnus rook d6 trying to exchange more uh, pieces and now magnus play grandmaster's move queen b4 so attacking twice the rook but also rook is pinned so uh, king e7 bringing the another defender to this pinned rook and now we have f6 and of course pawn can't be taken because then rook gonna be lost and the game so king d7 and now we have rook on e1 so attacking the knight and here if the knight go on c6 which looks pretty logical because now knight uh, protects the uh, e7 square from um, you know uh, attacking and extraying the the king winning the queen and also attacking the queen so it looks quite quite good move but queen g4 would be played and now look this rook and this queen uh, creating uh, some mating ideas king d8 is the only move and now f7 this move is so strong the checkmate is coming so the only move to to prevent is uh, actually taking on f7 and after losing the queen of course the the game is won so uh, knight c6 was not the way to go a rook on f6 um, was played and in this position queen d4 with check and attack on the uh, knight and that is this is the double attack already on the e5 and it can't be uh, protected king can't move here king can't move here due to the uh, bishop controlling this diagonal so uh, queen on d6 was played queen e5 taking the knight queen e5 rook on e5 now we have rook c6 rook e3 uh, calmly defending the uh, pawn on c3 and in this position uh, vladislav kovaliev resign the game as there is nothing to do he is the um, the piece down uh, actually piece for the the pawn but this pawn of course can't be pushed uh, and this is a too big advantage to to play on the top level so yeah as always um, the game is available in the um, uh, study section in liches.org link in the description and also um, if you like this video press like if you don't like this video press unlike and comment leave the comment uh, what you would like to see uh, what you would like me to improve um, in my fresh new channel it's not even one month a uh, couple of days more and then gonna be one month and yeah click subscribe uh, if you like my content and you don't want to miss uh, any other games i comment on tata steel chess tournament in Veg vacancy now uh, but after that i'm going back to the games of akiba rubinstein as i create the saga of this great uh, play uh, from beginning of 20th century that was the guy who uh, beat Lasker beat Capablanca so uh, really interesting stuff and he was the expert of rook ending so we are slowly coming to the um, peak of his career uh, for now I just covered uh, some of his game from the beginning with a lot of mistakes but with a lot of great lessons as well Okay, that's being said. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.